Don't allow what anybody out there tells you is possible or not possible for you. All right, what's up, guys? Welcome to another, we haven't really titled this series yet, but maybe Little Joe podcast. K-O, K-O, I don't even know how to pronounce or how to say my uh, podcast or my uh, channel name. So kind of a big deal, Joe, Little Joe collab. Uh, Joe, are you going to change your name anytime? What's that? Do I change not my your, name? Not your real name, but your like Insta persona name. Are you IFBB Joe Seaman yet? No, no. I just, I, everything, like all my social media is called Coach Little Joe. So Coach Little Joe. my yeah, Instagram's right. Coach Little Joe. And then, uh, yeah, YouTube is also Coach Little Joe. I guess for consistency, you're going to keep it to Coach Little Joe. Yeah. Like everybody knows I'm a pro now, so I don't really need to tell them. Okay. No tooting your horn. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, talking about tooting your horn, uh, you had some really exciting news today. And that kind of prompted me to, to do this. We had agreed to, to do another podcast because I guess people somewhat like it. You got some good feedback, did you? Yeah, no, I had a few, I had like a few people that said they liked it because it's, you know, it's a different, a different form of, uh, you know, content than what I'm usually putting out there with the, the training videos and such. So I think people like to see just, you know, being yourself talking about uh, topics that are popular going on in the fitness world. Yeah, I think uh, I got I got some positive comments too, and I think it's like the the hardcore, maybe uh, I shouldn't say just the hardcore demographic, but people who like bodybuilding actually would rather watch this stuff than watch something like Nutrition One Hundred and One, you know, because they probably already know Nutrition One Hundred and One or you know Basic Cycles or whatever. I know you don't have that on your channel, but you know, some people do, um, and uh, they'd rather watch that than the informative kind of like basic stuff. Uh, it gives us, gives us like a platform to talk about other shit that's rel- relevant in the industry right now. So, okay, good. Um, uh, that said, guys, subscribe to the channels. I almost forgot. If you can, subscribe to Joe's channel, um, subscribe to my channel, and uh, we'll have all the links. Anyways, if you like the podcast, let us know. Um, give it a thumbs up, share it, as many shares as we can get. We're trying to get this moving. And, um, you know, Joe, Joe has got some big things going on this year, um, including the most recent news. And I'll let Joe share it because he shared it on Instagram this morning. And it kind of prompted me to want to want to make this video even faster. I, we're going to do it on Friday, but I'm like, okay, let's do it now because I'm so excited. <laughs> get free sh- I mean, for Joe to get free, I mean, to... to <laughs> The- <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I did have uh, some exciting news that I shared this morning, which is uh, for the first time in almost, well, it's almost been three and a half, four years. Uh, I'm now affiliated, uh, well, as a, an athlete with Dragon Pharma. I just signed with them um, as of June, and uh, I was just waiting to make sure, you know, I got the products, and you can kind of see them if you look behind me, just back there, like there's all the products just chilling back there on the shelf. Um, so I've had the chance, you know, to start trying some of their products and I'm actually going to do a product review. I'll probably post that on my channel next week. So I'll do a review of all the products and the ones I like, you know, what I think works best and so on and so forth, just to give everybody an idea of how that, how everything works. But, uh, at the same time, I'm excited to be a part of their team. You know, like, I feel like it's going to benefit both of us. And for me, especially like, I'm excited, especially going in with, uh, you know, a good company behind you when the shows are coming up. So it gets me more excited and uh, confident to go into prep. Yeah, for sure. And Joe, Joe fucked up last time we did the podcast because he wore the, the Dragon Pharma shirt after he pre-announced he had an announcement and I <laughs> guessed it. I don't think anybody would have known that unless you're like, hey, is that a Dragon Pharma shirt? <laughs> <laughs> I did. And I did. I called you on and I'm like, is that, is that a dragon pharma shirt, Joe? Is that? I, yeah. <laughs> then I realized, cause I could read you. I can, I can read you now cause I've known you long enough. And I realized I, I, I spoiled it. So I was thinking, uh, so I don't, I don't think anybody caught on to that though. 
making sure you can't see this. I've got a side screen. I'm hoping people can't see it. I don't know. I can't see anything. I don't, I don't want to close the whole thing. Oh, boom. So maybe people could see that. Oh, well. We'll find out. Yeah. Nobody cares, right? I mean, you guys are here for the content, not really our faces. Like, yeah. You know, maybe. Um, so <laughs> more about Dragon Pharma. Let's hear more. Just um, what's going like I you know what they're they're a fairly new company right? Yeah no they are fairly new I think they've been around uh, I believe uh, they've been around since 2015 2016 yeah. they're based out of Florida so okay. which is kind of cool so like uh, yeah they're all based out of Florida and like they recently wanted to expand and have athletes in Canada because I think they have most of their athletes are in the U.S. and I think they have a few outside of the U.S. like in Europe I think and like mm -hmm. Australia and stuff like that, but they haven't expanded to Canada yet. So they've signed myself and I know from what I heard, they signed Robin Strand as well. So yeah. there's another Canadian on there as well. Um, but yeah, like they have a good product line. Like, you know, they have everything from, you know, like pre-workout to, you know, aminos to protein powder. They have stuff for your, they have a something for your joints. They have, um, uh, and like and so on they have actually have a lot i can't even name off the top of my head all of them i haven't tried all of them yet but they have they have quite a few good products yeah and they also have you know the clothing and and mm -hmm. everything else but uh more importantly i just like i like what they kind of stand for and it's more of like the real like bodybuilding like lifestyle and fitness approach more than just like the you know like the fitness influencer sort of like you know it's more of like i feel like their approach is more of like the hardcore bodybuilding vibe you know and they kind of like that's the kind of vibe i got is they, they want like you know some hardcore bodybuilders on their team and that's uh that's why i found like it uh, it aligned with like someone like myself more than yeah. some of these other companies that are offering you know contracts for sure yeah i i totally agree with you like i wouldn't want um if i were you like a gym shark sponsorship or something or like um and no offense to gym shark and <sighs> You know the the clothing they make. I'm sure it's nice clothing, but it just it just doesn't scream like hardcore bodybuilding. Um, you know, as much as something like Dragon and Dragon looks like a hardcore company. Like without and plus, you know, another consideration too. Uh, I and I don't know what your thoughts are on this. I don't think Dragon has any like controversial hardcore supplements like pro hormones. No. No, see, like, and and that's hard to. Um, it's hard to represent a company like that. And uh, I, Joe, Joe, we talked about this before, like the pre-screening, what we were going to talk about. And I said I was going to talk about controversy, and I really don't want to talk about too much controversy. But um, I was doing a thing with Blackstone. I was like one of those ambassadors because I met them in Ohio, uh, yeah. and, and they sold me on it. And actually, it was a pretty good program. Um, and I met PJ Braun and everything, and his guys. Uh, I just, you know, quickly touch on that. PJ Braun really fucked up, in my opinion, with his posts, but that's another story. I, I, I don't want to get too much into it. Joe, you're looking baffled, so that's good. We won't go that. No, like I, 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 like, I totally get what you're saying. It's just I feel like that's a whole other topic in its own. And I just, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we're not going to talk about it, I promise. Yeah. But what I was going to say is like, <laughs> a lot of pro hormones and stuff, and, you know, these kind of products. And, and when, I, when I think about, representing a company like i think about what's my you know 19 year old or cousin gonna be looking at from that line you know is he gonna look yeah. at hormones is it gonna potentially mess him up is he not gonna know what he's taking like i'd rather like a hardcore supplement company but without any like super hardcore ramifications you know what i mean yeah but uh, dragon no, I, I i agree and that's the same as me like i wouldn't want to represent a company that has any like semi-legal products on their line because it, yeah. you know what i mean it just it's especially in canada it's like the rules are different in canada than the u.s so it's like yeah. all the all the products like dragon pharma has would all be legal in canada yeah. they don't have them like at the stores or like you can't go to a supplement store in canada and buy them but you can still buy them online and they would get across the border no problem right but uh yeah, that's a, that's actually a big thing too. Is I wouldn't want to yeah have be behind a company like that because at the end of the day, if they go down, then it makes you look bad because you're promoting them. You know. 
Yeah, yeah, and just the ethical stuff too. I mean, just anyways, and and these guys have big Rami, huh? Yeah, yeah, they do have big Rami on there too. So yeah. maybe in the near future, I'll be able to <laughs> do Maybe something not. and with him at some point. That'd be pretty cool. I I was I was telling uh, I was talking to Joe about this. I said, listen, guys, you know you better subscribe because we're gonna have Big Rami on the podcast. Joe's gonna finagle it, right? We're gonna figure something out. I'll see if I can work that. Yeah. Well, we're gonna teach him English. Yeah. <laughs> you know that. Yeah. Actually, Rami's English is pretty good. I'm. I'm I think he's gotten better over the years. He's probably yeah. He's definitely gotten better. I think he's probably not like yeah. fluent, but he probably knows enough to get by. Have you ever heard Nasser El Sambadi in interviews? Oh yeah, they're funny. <laughs> you know, I think Nasser and they were they're both from Egypt, right? So they both refer to themselves as you know, Rami said apparently Nasser used to do that too. Like why oh, really? third person? He's like, Yeah, Rami is best, Rami, thanks fans. And it's funny how he says that. I like it how he talks. Yeah. About it. I guess <laughs> well, listening to Nasser versus Rami, Nasser was a lot more like full of himself, that's for sure. Well, Nasser, that must have been an evolution, though. I heard Nasser got really bitter near the end, and he, like, I don't know. It was the bitterness, but he was always kind of full of himself, too, from, from what I hear. But I think uh, his linguistics improved over the time, too. Like, he was well-spoken. That guy yeah. was a pretty smart guy. So it's unfortunate. Smart guys are often the ones who uh, say the dumbest shit. <laughs> 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 that Nasser said, he just said offensive and mean things, you know? Yeah. But, okay, so Rami, you, me, podcast, subscribe, guys. Uh, that That's a good reason. It's happening. It's happening next week. Next week. <laughs> next week. <laughs> Joe's going to reach out to Rami. Listen, guys, <laughs> drop this contract if we can't get Rami on this local Ottawa podcast. Yeah. It's going to fly. Okay, cool. Um, so I guess we'll move on. Uh, anything else you want to say about the, the Dragon Farm? Do you get a promo code? Or? Yeah, no, I do have a promo code. It's going to be, uh, it's Coach Joe. Mm -hmm. So that's all capitals, Coach right. Joe. Um, yeah. And that'll be, uh, I believe that's for 10% off products, anything on their site. So anytime, you know, someone uses that, obviously, uh, they can get 10% off anything that Dragon Pharma has anytime. It's not like a one-time thing, so... Yeah, they could yeah. use that as many times as they want. Yeah, I really like that black shirt you were wearing in the in the ad. This one? Like, no, 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 the one you had on in the Dragon Pharma. That's a Jay Cutler shirt, isn't it? Yeah, this one's a Jay Cutler shirt, yeah. Cutler shirt. But uh, you had like a, a, a an all black one it has a D on it, but it's just a nice fit, you know? Oh, yeah, like they, they sent me a ton of shirts. Like I have probably, there's over yeah. 10 shirts that they sent me, and like a lot of them really fit nice too. Like they're really good shirts. Yeah. They're not... It's not poor quality stuff. Like it's stuff you'd want to wear, just wear out and about, or even in the gym. In the bar or something. The, the, yeah, like, yeah, not that, do that yeah. you go to the bar, but it does look like one of those like bar shirts that, you know, tight. If you were you to. Could, it, you could wear it out. Like if you're going to go out to eat, you could totally wear it. It'd fit fine for that. Yeah, but it looks they're nice. somewhat fancy. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Well, I'll be looking at those too. Um, let's move on to what I want to talk about today. Um, and I don't know how many of, uh, the viewers have seen that Ronnie Coleman, Joe Rogan podcast. Um, I talked to Joe about this a second ago and I guess he caught some of it, which is good. Not all of it, but, um, I'm going to touch on as much as I can because there were a lot of interesting things that Ronnie said. And, um, I want to start off just by saying, you know, in all respect, if I do say anything that sounds like maybe like not insulting to Ronnie, but you know, I have the utmost respect for Ronnie and I don't want to, you know, go against whatever he says. I'm sure whatever Ronnie says is pretty honest and uh, he's a legend and uh, the, I have more respect for that guy than anyone in the industry, anyone, you know? I just think sometimes his facts are a little mangled or mumbled. You know, but we'll talk about that. What did you, uh, what did you think of Ronnie's interview? Um, I think, well, in general, I think the biggest thing to me that stood out was just like, I feel like he's not really in the, in it anymore. You know what I mean? Like it's, uh, there's some guys where it's like, 
you know, they retire, but they still stay a lot more relevant. And I feel like he's hasn't really stayed as relevant. So when he's like bring when they bring up like the modern day guys and they're like, Oh, what did you think about, you know, this Mr. Olympia or what do you think about this guy or this and that? And like, he just like his comments seem sort of like, like he's just guessing almost at, at sometimes, like, it's not like he's really paying attention to what's going on currently. Um, and that's not to say like, you know, that's not knocking him. It's just like, I feel like he just, he doesn't really keep up with like the current top guys as much, you know, because he's not in it anymore. Yeah. Um, and it's funny cause he has a supplement line and he should be re- like, he should be trying to stay relevant and he does try to, but I think that the legacy carries him like Jay Cutler stays relevant by media. Um, and in, I don't know how to put this, but Jay Cutler kind of needs to. Like, I know Jay Cutler's a legend as well, but I think Ronnie is almost an undeniable legend like Arnold Schwarzenegger. You know, Arnold Schwarzenegger can go vegan, (laughs) talk about, completely contradict everything he's stood for in the past, and you'll still love him, you know? It's like, oh, well, fuck, you know? He's still the, the bodybuilder of bodybuilders, even though... There are certain times where I'm looking at Schwarzenegger and thinking, this guy isn't representing the sport as it is today. He's kind of stuck in the past too. In fact, if anybody's like at the same place Ronnie is, it's, it's Arnold. Like he hasn't really evolved with the sport. Although he's a promoter, um, I just think he dislikes where the sport is now. So he doesn't agree and he says some things. And, and, and the veganism is something that I find very interesting. But anyways, I, I don't want to make a podcast about Schwarzenegger. I'll go back to Ronnie. I agree with you there. Like, he's just, he just seems all over the map, though, eh? Like, <laughs> and you tell we're Canadian, I say A. Joe doesn't say A. Um, but uh, <laughs> I do, but probably, not probably, not I, probably try to keep it low key. You know, I don't want anybody to know. The I know, I know. <laughs> don't be uncool. Don't say a. Hey, we'll bring Wayne on. He's um he's from Newfoundland. He's Joe, Joe's training partner. You probably heard him in Joe's videos. He's from Newfoundland, which is like the most Canadian of our provinces. Well, you know, Newfoundland and and, and probably PEI and Nova Scotia are pretty distinct. Or Quebec, but Quebec's part of Canada. <laughs> Quebec's its own country. Quebec's its own country, yeah. <laughs> They're getting their own mail the postal system, too. Don't you live in Quebec? <laughs> you can't even talk. Your speaking privileges are revoked for moving to Quebec. <laughs> go to your Provigo. Um, yeah, back to Roddy. It's just, he doesn't seem with it all the time. And I've heard this before, that people think it might be because he's on a lot of medication. And I really don't doubt he's on a lot of medication. Like, I think he's heavily medicated. Um, Well, and the thing is, is I think a lot of people, like, even now, especially younger, younger people or people who are outside of the sport of bodybuilding would reference Ronnie from, like, the Netflix documentary. Because, like, even me, like, I could say an example. Like, when I go to, like, my, my car dealership and I'm getting my car serviced, the guys will always be like, oh, man, you're huge. Like, are you as big as that Ronnie guy? Like, you know, like, oh, that's so sad what happened to him. Like, you know, this and that. And, like, they know basically, like, Ronnie Coleman for being, you know, he was a big guy and then he got crippled. Like, that's basically what people in the general public would know about him because of Netflix, you know. And it's like, they're like, oh, that's so sad. Like, they're like, he, like, you know, he crippled himself. And I'm just like, well, like, I try, I don't really like argue with them because I'm just like, they're not going to understand it because, you know, they're, they've never been a professional athlete by any means, but it's like, it's, you know, kind of like, I feel like that documentary sort of gave people a one-sided view of who he is or, you know, and whatever. And it's, I think in the documentary, he's talking about his medications. And um, I do think even in the documentary, he did say like how, like, you know, obviously like they really numb, numb the pain for him. So I'm assuming it would probably make him feel a little bit like a high or something that could affect like his, you know, what he's saying. Yeah. There's something cognitively off. Like he used to, maybe he wasn't sharper, but this is a really intelligent guy. I mean, when you look at him, at him on paper, he's got a, uh, a degree. Um, he, he writes, he used to write, I guess he used to publish books. Um, yeah, he wrote a few autobiographies, I think. Yeah. He wrote his autobiographies, but prior to that, he used to publish like journals and stuff. Uh, yeah a dumb guy i just you know maybe it's 
he's from Louisiana and maybe the culture is different and people are just, you know, they, 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 they speak differently and they're more reserved in their speech. I don't know what it is, but Ronnie, to me, when I see him in an interview, it's like, I, I don't know. He just seems kind of off, especially lately. But um, I want to go back to what you were saying. People, man, that pisses me off. It really like, like nothing gets me angry. And I think I made videos where I get angrier and angrier, like YouTube, because um, I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking about it. And people who don't understand risk and, you know, the, the benefit of what we do versus the risk or why we do what we do, even though there's risk. And, and I use the, the analogy of like NASCAR racers. Like you think, and there's amateur and just recreational racers too, guys who go on dirt bikes and go to do the track, you know? Do you think people who race actually don't consider that they're gonna fuck themselves up, get hurt seriously, but they do? Yeah. And it's, it's ridiculous for me when somebody says, well, why do you, I had a comment, why do you do this if you know there's risk? And I'm like, why do you cross the street? Like, this is the reason I, you know, um, this, is, this is my thing. This is my passion. This is my hobby. This is what I like to do. I acknowledge there's risk, but the risk is part of the entire process. And as long as you acknowledge it, and you try to minimize it, obviously, you know, it's not like we're, we're clowns just taking random risk, at least I hope not, and we're, we're learning, then it's part of the game. And the same thing with Ronnie Coleman. They're like, why did Ronnie lift so heavy? At that level, if you can't understand that, then I think there's something wrong with you. Like, I'm, I'm a total, and I don't want to get too philosophical, but I'm an existentialist. So, like, you know, that's a, the, the branch of philosophy that believes, like, do what you have to do to be the best you and create the best you you can. You know, that's your whole purpose. Like, we're not just here to sit and no offense to people who can go on the assembly line and push widgets all day. You know, that's, that's cool and push buttons and, and make widgets or whatever, manufacture widgets. Like, that's their prerogative. But I want to do something more. And I'm not saying just because I'm a bodybuilder, it's more than them. But for me, that's, that's what I love to do. And for Ronnie, he was at the fucking top. So when people say, like, the guy has no right or he shouldn't have lifted that heavy, poor Ronnie, he shouldn't have lifted that heavy. Like it just see, I'm getting pissed off right now. You know what I mean? No, I know. But I think I think the other thing is like a lot of people. The biggest difference I see between even like Ronnie Coleman when he was in his prime and he was winning Olympias versus now is like nobody nobody in that time had their phones in the gym and all this bullshit that you mm -hmm. see yeah. now. To be honest, and it's like for example, like I can you know reference myself. Like I've had times where it's like I would be on my phone when I was in the gym, but like one thing I started to do and I actually started to do it before the whole lockdown stuff happened was I stopped going on my phone when I was in the gym. Yeah. I literally just leave my phone in my bag or if I had it with me, I was not looking at it. I just had it for music. Right. And like, yeah. I'm just being like, just for my, this is just for me. Like I noticed that like I was training harder and it's like, you're, oh, yeah. you don't give yeah. a shit. You don't give a shit about what else is going on. And it's I'm like, I feel sure. like a lot of people now it's like, they, they talk shit about Ronnie and how he lifted heavy, but it's like, maybe you'd be lifting heavier if you were actually focused on your workout, not fucking focused on your phone, you know? Like, yeah. And, but what's wrong with lifting heavy? It's not like the guy was like shooting heroin or even worse. Like let's look at PEDs. It's not like he was doing crazy amounts of, I, I don't know if he was, but you know, this, this isn't what exacerbated his disc issue. He was no. lifting heavy. So that made him physically, not physically ill, but, it, it, his body deteriorated because of it. But what's wrong with heavy lifting? What's wrong with being an athlete? Like what's wrong if you're a cyclist and, and you have an injury and you want to train through it and you exacerbate or make that injury worse? I mean, you're, not, you're, you're just trying to get better. It's not like, it's not anything stupid. And, and, and Ronnie wasn't just some stupid amateur bodybuilder trying to, you know, win I don't know, YMCA, the Mr. YMCA, as they call it, you know? I don't think you have a Mr. YMCA. But, uh, no, I know what you mean. Regional. Like, but, he was uh, the best in the world. 
people don't really I, I find like a lot of people just don't get it because like they they don't they've never tried to do something like that you know they've never tried to be other than you know like the people will say like oh like you know i went to school and got a degree that's that's dedication and so on but i'm like you're not really like like there's a difference between like an athlete pushing themselves to be a professional and be the best possible professional they can be and dedicating their life to it and like you getting a degree because it's like i know a lot of people that you know they get degrees and stuff but like outside of that they're lazy and whatever right yeah so it's like you know it's like it doesn't it's a different type of like i feel it's like a different type of person a different type of mindset you have to have to do that and it's like even like you know i could say me versus like someone like well this isn't like talking shit at all before i even say it but like wayne like me and wayne train together all the time right but like for me, it's like this is this is what I do. For him, he's doing it because like, you know, he loves bodybuilding and he loves to train. But it's like he's not going in there every day like this is his mission, you know. Like for me, it's like when I go to work out, I'm like, okay, this is what I did last week. I want to beat those numbers. I want to, you know, this and that. Like even with the garage workouts, that's my mindset, you know. And I feel like it's just like when you take it that seriously, you you can understand like why someone like Ronnie Coleman would push to those extremes to be the best, you know, versus like the average person is going to look at it like, Oh, why would he want to do that to himself? Like, it's yeah. like, if you ask anybody who's like, you know, if you asked anybody who's a top IFBB pro, you know, if they could win the Olympia, you know, in the next like two years or three years, if like they took some, you know, supplement or, or train like super heavy, whatever the heck, whatever the heck the case might be, they'd all say, yeah, I'd do it. And like, even yeah. if that meant they'd be, you know, crippled or dead in 10 years like they'd probably do it because like they'd want to win that because that's like their whole yeah. goal is to be the best they can be there's actually a research study on that in athletes there's research that indicate they they pulled athletes and they shortened their lifespan like admittedly shortened yeah. their lifespan on a survey just to perform better in their craft which i think is admirable like i think that's an admirable characteristic because you're really devoting your life to something that's a passion. I just think people don't understand. And I don't want to say this, but the, the, the point of life, you know, <laughs> it isn't just to be and live as long as you can and just be happy just being. Maybe if you're like in a Zen state, I don't know. Maybe that's cool for some people. But I think some people need an external motivator to keep them going a passion something like creating like shit if i was an artist and i could paint all day uh beautiful paintings i'd probably do that you know and there's not much risk involved but athletes unfortunately there is so to create their masterpiece they gotta they gotta make some sacrifices life isn't just about like just sitting there and not taking risk if you sit there and not take risk you're gonna have a pretty lame you know monotonous life in my opinion but it's a difference in philosophies. I guess that's why you are where you are. And that's why I do what I do. Um, although I see your, what you're saying about Wayne uh, and myself included and pretty much any amateur, we don't go in there. And I think it's because Wayne's around my age, eh? I think he's like 40, 39, 30. He's 30, yeah, he's 36. Six. But like, yeah, like what I mean is like, it's not like he's not going to work out hard, but it's like, no, at no. At the end of the day, like he, he, you know, he has a normal job. That, like his, he has a career. He has that outside of it. So it's like for him, it's not a, it's not, it's not it's like not a do or goal. die type, you know, mentality with it, right? It's like, it's, it's a hobby and a lifestyle that he enjoys. And so, and that's not me not even saying like, obviously, he wouldn't say those things about Ronnie Coleman being like, oh, like, I don't know why yeah. he would do that. But it's just showing the difference between, yeah, like an amateur and a professional and yeah. like the different mindsets someone would have towards like you know that uh like sure. what you're doing when you go to the gym you know and that's exactly i was gonna you finish my sentence like that's way like i'm just like wayne in the sense that you know i'm i'm in my late 30s uh and i have a career and i'm married and wayne's like the same you know we have the same thing so professional bodybuilding i think is kind of set sail for us like it's <laughs> 10 years ago if we would have got into it I think Wayne would have been a great pro and he would have gotten for it too. But, you know, you got to realize when the time is kind of passed. Yeah. And just you have other things going for you. And for me, that's the way I look at it. It's like, well, I'm an amateur here, but I have other things. So I'm not going to allocate all my life. Whereas you started young, you were committed young, 
And now you're still young. Like you're, you're not an old, you're what, 26? Uh, 20, 28. 28. But you're, you know, 28. You're not even in your 30s yet. And you're in your prime, probably at 34 peak, I would say, for bodybuilding. Maybe later, it's arguable. But, you know, you're still not even in your, like, your muscle maturity can probably get better, I would assume, if you believe in that thing. Yeah, I think, honestly, I think for a lot of guys, like, well, if you look at, if you reference someone, I would say that uh, someone that has a more similar physique to mine and someone who started around the same time would be like Jay Cutler. And like he was getting, I would say he was getting to be his best in his early to mid thirties. Yeah. Um, right. So it's like, obviously like it does take time to get that muscle maturity and that density and that overall conditioned, like polished look. So I feel like, you know, once you get to like, for me, like obviously like the next few years, like it's not really about adding tons and tons of muscle. It's just about continuing to shape and refine and, you know, bring in that overall look that you can bring with like muscle maturity yeah. as well, you know? And I just, I think that's why it takes like, you know, 10, 15 years to really like have that like top yeah. level look, you know? Well, let's go back to Ronnie. Like he started late. That's what he was saying in the interview. I think he was uh, in his late twenties or early thirties when he started, he won the Olympia. And then like, Honestly, if we look at Ronnie's pictures, his last years weren't his best. But, dude, that would have been like – he must have been 40. He must have been 40. I think he was in his 40s. Like, he yeah, – uh, I'm pretty sure he won his first Olympia. He was in, like, his mid-30s. Mid-30s. Like, mid-30s, yeah. maybe late-30s, uh, mid to late. Yeah, because I think his last Olympia is – he was in his 40s. His last few Olympias, I think he was over 40. I think his peak was probably, again, 34, 35. Yeah. Like, he's there, and he looked really good, and then there was a slow decline. But he had, again, like, it's hard to tell with Dexter held on, right? But Ronnie had all those injuries starting already when he was in his 30s. And that's what Joe Rogan goes about. Like, I had no idea after watching that interview that Ronnie – got injured so often early in his career, like before his career even started, the guy was already broken from football and from powerlifting. Like the yeah. guy into bodybuilding with like so many pre-existing injuries that got worse and worse and worse, like from lifting. And he's still like, it's, but that to me is like the ultimate motivation to see a guy for him, there were no obstacles. You know what he like, it's like, Oh, I herniated a disc. Maybe I should see a doctor, he thinks, like, four days later. And then he gets to see a doctor, and then next thing you know, he's, he's back squatting, you know, for the – like, not even four weeks, right? It's, it's, it's unbelievable that some people can just put it on autopilot and, and just ignore their, their pain. Yeah, like, uh, it's just a different mindset, you know, too, because I've had times, like, even myself, like, when you're prepping – and it's like you have little things happen, like little aches and pains, and you're just like, you know, the average person would be like, be like complaining about that all the time. And, you know, you're just like, whatever, like I got to deal with it. I'll, you know, like it's whatever it could be, you know. And I feel like with Ronnie, it's like, you know, he had that going into it. And like, you know, it wasn't something that like, you know, I guarantee you if he was never Mr. Olympia or anything, he would never say like, oh, I wasn't Mr. Olympia because, you know, I had a back, my lower back was, yeah. you know, weak or something like I had a back issue. So this and that, but it's like when you sit there and you hear that this guy had lower back problems and he would squat 800 pounds and deadlift 800 pounds and do barbell rows with like 500 pounds and all this sh craziness, like you got to be like, okay, yeah, the guy's a freak of nature, but to even be able to endure that is like insane. Cause I like for me, like with a healthy back, you know, lifting anything close to that, I'm like, holy crap, like, your bones are aching from doing it. So it's like, it's not, it's not a joke. You yeah. Know? And the muscular pain the next day, when you get that tightness, or you pull, like, you just pull a muscle in your back. And it's kind of like you have, I don't know if you get this, like, more on the right side, and it's pulling and like, you can't, have you ever not been able to put on your socks? Yeah, I've hurt my back. Uh, I hurt my back once. Um, from deadlifting when I was younger, I pulled something in my lower back and yeah. it was, uh, every time I'd wake up in the morning for about a few weeks, like I could barely like stand up straight and like putting yeah. on, yeah, doing that kind of stuff. Like yeah. in the yeah. morning was tough. Can you imagine he goes through that? He must go through that all every day. 
Yeah, and he just wakes up and then he'll go train through it. It's yeah. This day, it's nuts. He's in a walker and he'll still train through it. It's to me that's that's I guess admirable. I respect that. Um, the other thing about that interview too uh, that I found kind of odd was the and you you were talking about it the body fat percentage. Yeah, claims to be. Do you think? Here's here's my question. Do you think he doesn't know? like what true body fats should be, or do you think he was just making shit? I, I think it's probably a combination of he doesn't really know the true body fat percentage and the fact that like the general public, usually from what I've seen, like people either think that they have, their body fat is way higher than it is or way lower. And I find like people in the, like that are really into the fitness bodybuilding lifestyle would usually for the most part, assume that their body fat is higher than it is, but yeah. the general public, and this is just from like my experience as a coach, even working with like people in the general public, they always think their body fat percentage is lower than it actually is. Usually like say oh, yeah. for example, you know, like someone who's obviously, you know, overweight and carrying a lot of excess body fat, like they probably think they're like 15% body fat when in reality, they're probably 30, 35, you know? Yeah, true. So I think it's uh I think it's just the fact that he has no idea what his body fat percentage was. And he's just like, Oh yeah, I had no body fat. <laughs> it was 0. 0.3, 0. 0.33. Yeah. <laughs> like I was like, you'd be so, but then he said on the deck that he was actually neg negative. So if you were like negative body fat, that would be a, a flag. <laughs> Something's wrong. I don't think you'd be alive. <laughs> no, he wouldn't be alive. You can't, you can't be point anything. And, uh, yeah. Greg Doucette has like interesting videos on body fat. It's weird the body fat, like just to just to touch on that, it's a totally different subject, but I've seen people claim to go into or have DEXA results and they're like really low. And then the next person looks as lean or, or maybe leaner and their DEXA scan results are even way higher, like, like 8% where someone else might be like, around five on the DEXA and that 8% looks leaner. So it's weird. I think it's somehow how people carry their body fat. I, I don't even know if yeah, I, I think, it, I think it's that. And I also think it's like total body mass too. Right. Cause I feel like anytime I've tried to measure body fat, but like anytime I've ever tried to do it before, like I always find like, if you're a bigger guy, it's yeah. usually more inaccurate than for someone smaller too. Yeah, it's true. It's true. And those, those, the, the best are those impedance scales, like the ones they have at commercial gyms. Yeah. Yeah. yeah those are the worst. <laughs> I was, I was 25%. <laughs> I was 25% at one point, I think when I was doing nationals and uh, you know, like I wasn't 25%. No, no, it's definitely impossible. So I was like, how am I 25% or was it that, that year I did provincials. So I was probably, I don't know, four or five, four or five, I would say, you know, five. Yeah. There's no way I was 25. It's, it, but it's hard. Like everybody thinks they're 3%. And I don't know how many people are really 3% body fat. Yeah. I think, uh, well, even for myself, like I would say, like, I would say, like, yeah, like even like my last show is probably around 4%. Like at the lean it, at the lowest, I think it's probably like what you yeah. see people get down to usually is like 4%, anywhere from 4 to 6%, I would say, somewhere around there was usually what you'll see people get to in bodybuilding. Um, but yeah, like when people say, yeah, like, oh, it's 2% body fat or blah, 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 like anything like that, you're just like, I'm like, there's not, there's, there's like only a few people I've seen, like in like the history of competing that. I actually thought that person could be below 4% body fat because it's just ridiculously like the conditioning is just insane. But like, there's not that many I've seen ever, and so, ever be that mean, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You, and, and when you get like that low, you know, when you walk on stage and your feet hurt that you're yeah. low and stuff like that, like when you're extremely fatigued and when you're that lean, it's just, it's not a good feeling. That's how you know you're lean enough to compete. That's another topic altogether. Like, how do you know if you're lean? You should make that video because I don't think many people really know how lean they should be when they jump on stage. Uh, yeah, that's a really good idea. Because I, I see a lot of people and they're like, oh, yeah, I'm shredded. 
I, um, you know, even, even people I've helped out. Yeah. You know, I don't think for your first show, it's hard to know though. Like for your first show, it's hard to know how lean you should be like, and it's hard to even tell. I think your perception of it is like 10% body fat already looks crazy to you in the mirror. I'm sure if it's your first show or 8% or something, but you yeah. don't understand what, what a four would look like. Like just once you're, once the water is out, that should be like lights out, you know? So Ronnie, um, what else did he talk about? The, um, he talked about his, um, his PEDs for a second. Um, notably that he took time off for the good part of the year, which I totally believe. Uh, and I was talking to um, a friend who I know pretty well. Um, he doesn't believe that stuff. So there are still people um, who don't believe like Ronnie Coleman would have taken time off. And I, I, I listen, and I'm pretty sure he did, you know? Like, I, I don't think, I think Ronnie already was a genetic, a genetic freak. And that's something we were having this conversation. He didn't believe that, that Ronnie would have been natural in the beginning anyways, but I think he was, I really do think he was. Yeah. Like to be <laughs> the fact that he's like hands down, in my opinion, like the biggest physique I've ever seen on stage in crazy condition, like the amount of muscle he carried and to have that conditioning, that's, that's not just some crazy cocktail of like pads, you know, it's, or PDs, whatever, it's, uh, it's great. It's his genetics too, like, to be honest, because like that guy could have been, you know, to be honest, like if he never took anything, he'd still be better than probably half the pros out there. Sure. <laughs> like, For sure, yeah. I, you know what I mean? Like, and that's where, like, I, I do believe the guy took time off because, like, what's the point? Like, for most of his career, like, you know, especially towards the end, like he was just doing the Olympia. So it's like a lot of guys that just do the Olympia aren't going to be on cycle all year just to do the Olympia. What's the point of doing that? You know what like, my theory is, and I, I, I can't prove this, but my theory is that's a death sentence. Honestly, not to lower, not to, you know, and you've heard about pro bodybuilders. And it's hard because you're just speculating because you don't know what other people are doing. But people who are on like high amounts all the time, it's, and I, I can say from, from, you know, past knowing people and, you know, even personal history, past mistakes, that's really like that, that, that stuff will damage you big time, you know, just not taking breaks, letting your body relax. And I think Ronnie wouldn't be around. I don't think Ronnie would be around like Nasser. I can't speculate what he was doing, but I could assume that Nasser was probably going heavier than Ronnie. And he probably didn't even need to, you know what I mean? Like a lot of people just go heavier because they think it's the thing to do, but they don't need to. And I think that Ronnie is relatively healthy. And I think that's testament to, he's probably telling the truth. But, yeah. You know, my personal theory, um, he's healthy other than all these disc issues and all the, 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 the muscular skeletal stuff. Which, yeah, like his his issues are obviously like from his spine and so on causing him the issues. It's not his his organs or his heart or anything like that. That's uh, you know. But even if you look at him now, like for example, like people want to say anything. It's like it's like sure the guy's a lot smaller, but he's still really lean too. Like for someone that can't move around that well, he's still lean, lean. Like for a guy like in his fifties, like who hasn't competed in over a decade, like he looks, still looks lean and still has a little, a decent, little bit of muscle on him for someone who can you know, barely yeah. do anything now. I think I, I was watching it with uh, Paul Loran and I'm like, his arms are still bigger than mine. I'm almost <laughs> sure. His, but his arms are big. His, like they must be at least 19 and a bit. Oh yeah, probably 18 maybe. Yeah. Maybe 18, I don't know. But they're still, they're not, they're not like tiny. They're not tiny. <laughs> I mean, sure, they're not 22s anymore. No, I think he had 25-inch arms in his prime. I think he said 24. You can 24, like, 25. You have huge that, arms. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. have huge arms. Maybe you can help me with that. Yeah. Get me? So what is the secret to having huge arms? Uh, yeah. I, don't, I don't think there's a secret, to be honest. Uh, 
for me, like, I don't, I honestly don't even, I train arms once every other week. Yeah. Um, so I don't, I don't do them as frequently. And I find for myself that works better. Um, but like, I don't really find like doing more for them works better. You know, I find like less works better. I'm telling you, it's genetics. I, I, I really think that certain, you know, when we talk arms about, and calves, yeah, maybe. Well, not just arms and calves. Like there are certain muscle groups that are better on some people. And I used to think it was like maybe because of overtraining, but my shoulders, people are like, how do you get such calf shoulders? I'm like, <laughs> I've never trained my shoulders. I legitimately never even trained my shoulders until I was about 34. Even like the, I think the first time you saw me at a show, I really maybe trained shoulders once a, once a month. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, my shoulders aren't like underdeveloped or anything. So no. yeah, no, it's weird. It's weird. But I think there's certain like, like arms are one of those, you either got it or you don't, especially triceps, like in yeah. peak, but triceps, like some guys have just these huge, it's like hamstrings, like the huge hamstring drop. You, you think that's partially genetic? It is, but it's also knowing how to train your hamstrings too. Like there's certain body parts I find like maybe not so much arms, but a lot of guys don't know how to train their hamstrings. Like I'll say that straight up. Most guys don't know how to train their hamstrings properly. And that's why, and it might not even be the fact they're not training them. It's just like, they don't know how to effectively execute like exercises. And actually this is a little off topic, but like I saw a video uh, John Meadows did not too long ago. And he's talking about training legs and hamstrings. And, like, he touches on, like, how, like, you know, most guys neglect it. And, like, they'll just do, like, you know, three or four sets of a leg curl and call it a day for hammies, you know. And that's kind of like what they did back in Arnold's day. But I find, like, you know, for me, it's like if I do hamstrings, it's like, especially in the gym, like, I'm literally going to do, like, four or five exercises just for my hamstring-focused legs, you know. Like, it's just a focus on hamstrings. And I find, like, for myself, like, yeah. it's uh, – I don't think, like – uh, I don't think I have like gifted hamstring genetics really. I think it's just more just a lot of work I put into them. Like uh, yeah. my quads yeah. usually, I think I'm more quad dominant. So like for me building up my hamstrings to match them was uh, like my, probably one of my main focuses. And I think, yeah, a lot of, a lot of it I feel with hamstrings for the most people is yeah. Some of it's for sure genetics. Like some people like, like a Regan Grimes um, who has like, you know, naturally just has better hamstrings and, adductors and stuff and such but uh you know for most people i just don't think they know how to really contract and train and yeah. isolate the hamstrings better you know yeah you bring up meadows and i agree like i watch recently i watched a video um on arms because i've been to actively bring up my arms and meadows has um like all these variations and i'm like shit i thought it was like curl curl preacher curl and close grip, you know, and a couple of tricep exercises. But for, for the curl, like he has like, you know, supinate, pronate, different variations. And he's explaining why like, why the neutral position, the camera curls will thicken your arm, like um, maybe widen or thick, like it makes it bigger this way, like that way. You yeah. Know? It's the brachial radi, not the brachial radi, the radialis, sort of the brachial, sorry, between the bicep and the tricep that like touches out. Anyways, yeah. John's like a really good resource for that. And he'll, uh, and I think my arms have come up a little bit because it's been quarantine too. That's another great thing about quarantine. You can just throw around dumbbells all day. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I think we're good with Ronnie. I, we touched on everything. I, I just want to, um, you know, it's unfortunate. I, 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 Joe Rogan was, was a pretty good host, but I found he focused again. He focused too much on the negative, and everybody kind of makes Ron bad because, like, they focus on that. He has to do all this pain now, and I, I don't really think that should be a big area of focus when we're talking to Ronnie. Like, it's obvious it's happening now to him, but he did great things, so we should leave that alone. And let, the guy's obviously happy, so. To some extent. Oh, and he even says it himself. He's like, I don't have any regrets except, you know, wanting to do a couple extra reps when he did 800 pounds on the squat. So, you know, like, I feel like a lot of people, and it's it's the same, like, it's, it's funny because, like, I had people say that to me, you know, like with things like with prep or, you know, like when this and that happens and they're like, oh, like, I feel bad. And I'm like, 
I'm not asking for sympathy. This is what I do. This is what I love to do. Like, you know, shit happens. That's part of it. You know, like I'm not looking for sympathy, you know? And I feel like a lot of people nowadays, cause no offense, like a lot of people nowadays are just pussies. Like they just, they yeah. <laughs> like, that's just the way it is. Like, honestly, like I, I see it on a daily basis. Like people like just, they just want to complain about something and they want like attention for nothing. So I, you know, I like, I respect Ronnie a lot for the fact that he's like, you know, even though he's going through all that, like the guy is still like smiling when he goes to an expo, he's still like, you know, yeah, reading yeah. the fans, doing his thing, smiling. And like the guy's going through a lot of pain and like, you wouldn't even know it unless like, well, you'd know it, but like you wouldn't know it by his like face or the way he's acting because like he acts like he's like, you know, just having the time of his life at the same time. It's, it's like deflection and lack of accountability. That, I, I find that's the biggest thing. People are just aren't accountable for anything anymore. Like, oh, no. you know, if, if something bad happens, it's no longer their fault or their responsibility. They don't have to take care of it. They just want to, like, push it aside. But when great things happen, I mean, it's like, wow, look at me. I'm doing so well. And then something bad happens. It's like, well, it, it isn't my fault. It's Joe's fault, you know? Like, he did yeah. it. <laughs> it's oh. always... I, I deal with that all, all the time with uh, clients uh, and, you know, coaching and stuff too, right? Like people love it when they're seeing these crazy results, especially off the bat, if they just started and they see all these results, but then things start to hit sticking points. And then that's where, you know, in general, like you hit sticking points in life and people either will, are willing to push through and try to be better or they're, you know, they let it take control and then find an excuse to feel sorry for themselves. Yeah, my and my favorite like would be clients, and I I don't personally have any, um, but or that I know of, but people who fuck up and look shitty on show day, and and then can't own up to the fact that they weren't even doing what their coach said. That's why with you, um, I know Joe's coached me a number number of times, but I've fucked up a lot. Um, in the one show I really did follow Joe Tati. Um, I came in really well, but you know, the other times my head just didn't allow me to, I guess, follow instructions and like, you got to be accountable. You got to say like, okay, listen, who was responsible there? Was it me or was it my coach? And I think that happens a lot that people like <laughs> can't own up to their own mistakes. And then they'll just, yeah. I was with so-and-so and I'm going to a new coach because da 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 doesn't know my body and da 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 da, you know, it's like. It's just an excuse. It's a cop out. That's the way I see it. People just want to be in denial. Well, they want to, they want to find, it's like the thing that I've noticed, like even with myself is like people want to find someone that's like going to get, tell them something an easier way to do it. You know, they want like an easier way to, or this, the secret methods or something, some secret, you know, PEDs or some, you know, secret diet or this and that. And it's like, when I like, for example, like when I outline something for a client and it's very basic and it's very to the point of what they need to do. And a lot of it involves a lot of effort and hard work. Like I totally had people, I could tell you straight up, they dropped off probably after a month or even weeks because like, it's just too, they, they probably thought it was going to be easier and it's not, it's not easy. It's like, if you want the results, it's like, it's a lot of hard work. It's not, yeah. you know, sunshine and rainbows. <laughs> Consistency and follow through. Yeah, exactly. Joe, let's talk about the Olympia quickly because uh, we got like 20 minutes or something. Uh, yep. What do you see happening? In regards to like... It's, it's hard to know like because we don't even know. I don't even think we know who's qualified yet. But who's, who, who do you think the top five guys are going to be this year? Top five. I would say, well, it depends on who shows up. But let, let's I'd say, say for sure, like, like I, I let's let's you know, um, let's 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 uh, let's think outside the box here and say a few guys that we would want to show up show up. Like let's say, you know, let's say Phil Heath shows up. Let's say Sean Roden shows up. Let's say Big Ramy shows up. Um, yeah, fair game. Dexter, those Brandon, um, and all those guys. Like I would say, like in my opinion if there was no one not showing up kind of thing, like obviously I'm not going to mention Kai Green because I don't think Kai Green's ever going to show up. I was going to uh, say, he's kind of a wild card this year though. Cause people are, you don't, I don't think, I don't think Kai's ever going to do it again, man. Like he hasn't competed in like four years. Like he's still relative and everything, but like, 
I, I couldn't see him doing it, to be honest. But uh, I would say, like, in my opinion, like, you know, I would love to see Phil there. I'd love to see Sean back there. I'd love to see those guys go at it again. Because, like, I totally would see, you know, if Phil came in at 100%, Brandon Curry's not going to beat Phil at 100%. Like, there's no way. Um, and even a Sean Roden at 100%, like, if Sean Roden came in at 100%, I don't think Brandon Curry's going to beat him either. Have so, you like, seen Sean Roden lately? I know he's done it before. I know he's done it before. Come from, like... He's, he's heavier and stuff. Like, he's off-season for sure. But, like, he's not, like... He's still training, though. That's the thing. It was, like... He's yeah. like, because put it this way, like when he did the Olympia in 2018, you're right. He, start, he started off his prep, I think, at like 230 or something or 240, maybe 250, whatever it was. Wait, well, like, is that the year he did the prejudging? The prejudge that was a controversy. He was really, fu- and then he won the Olympia. Was that that year? 2018, he's won the Olympia, yeah. Yeah, but was that the same year he did that prejudging at the New York Pro? Or All the. Guest posing? No, guest the, posing, sorry, yeah, guest that was posing. last year. That was last year he did the guest posing. And everybody's like, oh, he's not going to be in shape. But then he had all that controversy with the, the girl, remember? So that, that wasn't before the Olympia, right? Yeah, that was last year. Um, so he, that's why he didn't do the Olympia last year because all that crap happened. But Right, but um, no, but did he, the, the, the guest posing, wasn't that the year he won the Olympia? No, it was the year after. Oh, I'm all hazy. Because everybody was saying, like, oh, he's not going to be in shape for it, this and that. Um, but, no, this year, like, he said, from what I've seen yeah. of him talking, like, he's saying he's, like, you know, he's, like, 280. And, like, he obviously isn't, like, shredded. But, like, for him to be 280, I don't think he's ever been that heavy before. So, I think he actually is. He said he's been training hard and stuff. So, like, I think he wants to come back. And I know with him, it's, like, I know he can get in shape. Like, it's not a matter he can't get in shape. It's just, like, you know, will they – let him do it or whatever the case might be, you know? Yeah. So um, I would say like, honestly, like I would say if, you know, if everybody showed up that can show up, um, I would say the top five would probably be like, you know, Phil, Sean, Brandon, Hottie, and uh, you could toss anybody else in there potentially, but uh, Rami? what's that? Rami? Did you mention Rami? Maybe Rami, or it could be like honestly, it could be Rami, it could be Dexter, it could be Dexter's not coming back. No, Dexter's done. The Arnold no, Classic. So this is supposed to be his last Olympia this year. I thought he said the Arnold Classic was where he's cutting it off. Well, he said at the Arnold's that this year would be his last Olympia. Oh, yeah, yeah. So he wants to do the Olympia mm-hmm. this year. Okay, well, if he does, yeah, definitely Dexter would be in the mix. Um, yeah. But, the, you know, the up-and-comers, the, the biggest up-and-comer I can see is Sergio. Um, Sergio definitely has legitimate stake at, like, top six, I think. Top- yeah, but I, I honestly think, like, um, this is maybe because I'm Canadian, but I think, like, Ian would beat Sergio. I do think Ian would beat Sergio. Yeah, you're right. So, like, I think, like, for example, like, if there's no Sean – no Sean, no Phil, no Rami, then, like, I could see Ian squeezing into the top six even. I know. I, 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 I don't – I always feel like I shouldn't speak to it because I'm biased, you know, like – It's true, though. Like, Ian's yes. done – you know, he's done a lot of shows and been in the top mix of a lot of shows. Like, it's not like he isn't capable of standing beside those guys, so. No, no, not not, you, not I mean? that. I mean, I just think I'm biased because no matter what, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think Ian – hit top five or top this year he's unequivocally in the top 10 i i think he could yeah. be the top 10 the other years but he improved so much the year um and his graininess and his size and i think his new coach has got some his new coach's philosophies are interesting and that's, i wanted to talk about diet today i don't even okay. maybe we'll sidebar it but like I, I watched his coach talking about how he does this like low carb, uh, low protein approach and high carb. And it seems to have really worked. I've actually kind of been doing that myself this year and it's, it's held well. Like my, my proteins lowered. I, I used to drink, you, you know, this, I used to eat a whole bunch of protein powder on my off season um, on yeah. of my meals. It's not that I don't eat. It's just like, I also eat tons of protein over it which yeah. is completely unnecessary and empty calories. Um, and I've gotten rid of that for the most part. And I've been eating since quarantine, fortunately, like chicken and real food sources. But yeah. 
carbs have been through the roof this year, like more than I normally am trying to keep my fats low. And it seems to be a good strategy. Like it just kind of keeps you lean enough. But your glycogen, your, your they call it sarcoplasmic um, fluids, right? Like between the muscle fibers. Yep. It fills you out all the time. I don't know. I, I think it's really interesting. So we'll see how it pans out for Ian. But I think he would be eating like a thousand grams of carbs from what I understand from that. I, I, I don't know for a fact. Like, but that's I think it's like, uh, like, cause like, well, I trained with Ian, right? Like I've trained with him uh, before this started. We trained together a handful of times and we were talking about some stuff diet wise and that. And like, mm. um, from what it sounds like is like the P tour guy is very like, it's similar to like what a CETO would do, I guess, but like in the sense of like your diet changes very often. Like it's not like, and it's kind of like something that I kind of do myself. And even Jake Cutler did this. Like it's like yeah. a zigzag diet where it's like, you'll do low carb days and like the low carb days, they have, you'll have like a higher protein intake. Right. And mm -hmm. then like the moderate carb days, obviously be like not a little bit different and then like higher carb days, your protein intake is lower. And I think that's kind of like what Makes the sense. Does. And like, that's kind of like what I do with myself or like, and I've started to do that with clients too. And it's like, you have them kind of eating based on what they're training. So it's like, you know, if they need to bring up their legs and it's a leg day, that'd probably be a good idea to do a high carb day. And then, you know, save the low carb day for like a stronger body part or, you know, base it could be based on how they're in prep, this and that. But like yeah. a guy like Ian probably has a lot more higher carb days because the guy's like burns through food, like nothing. Like I know he eats like his low carb day is probably like, a moderate carb day for me because like like i he eats, definitely eats more carbs than like what i would eat yeah his coach on that podcast with um with fuad was saying that ian flattens out on 500 grams so i don't know if that's true but probably i'm <laughs> sure that's what he said um, yeah. so like can you imagine 500 grams being that's like that's, that's a lot that that sounds like me telling you I'm flat all the time. <laughs> it's an inside joke because when Joe coaches me, I always think I'm flat. <laughs> I always think I'm flat in general. Um, okay, so back to the Olympia. Let's look at the beeline guys. Not beeline. I mean, out of the top five, and I don't mean I don't mean like ten to eighteen or whatever. I mean like the next set of guys, like second call out. Second call out. Let's call it second call out. Okay. Uh... Well, actually, Sergio's I totally done. forgot about one guy that should be in the top mix would be William Bonac as well. Uh, uh, but I, I'd say the second, uh, second call out, you'd see guys like, you know, I'd say Ra Raleigh Winkler would be in there. Um, yeah. Sergio, Sergio Olivia would be in there. Patrick Moore would be in there. You think Moore uh, will be in there? Patrick Moore will be in the second? I think he could be, yeah. I think he could He's be in like the second size? call out. Yeah, I think he could be. Like, he's got the potential to be. I actually think another guy that I think could be in the second call out, uh, you know, that uh, he hasn't done a pro show yet, but honestly, like, I think he could jump in there real quick as the Hunter Labrada. Oh, shit. That's what I wanted to talk about, too. Like, when we were on the topic of Ian, you see those pictures on Bodybuilding Without Borders on Instagram? They have uh, a person between Ian's current uh, pictures or current um, progress and uh, hunters. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Side. Man, it's so, it's it's almost like, not apples and oranges, but yeah, it, it, it's it's different structures, but Ian's like graininess carries them through too. And it's, it's uh, honestly, like, it's very hard to compare good. people through pictures. I know, yeah, it's like true. When they're actually beside each other, because it's the same thing as like, even for me, for example, like before I did that pro show in Toronto last year, like a lot of people were like, oh, Ian, everybody always thought Ian was bigger than me. And it's like, finally, I get to compete against the guy and like not saying I'm a better, not saying I'm better than him or anything, but it's like, obviously we're a lot but more similar size wise than people thought because like some people even thought I looked bigger or whatever. Cause it's like, I was joking with him about it when we were training. I was like, yeah, man, everybody always says you're bigger than me. And he's like, he's like, if anything, you're probably a bit bigger than me or we're around the same size, whatever. He's like, yeah. but it's like, we have different looks. So it's like to the average person. And he also said like, he's like, I'm a little bit taller too. Right. So like when I take pictures and a lot of my pictures, I post like uh, progress wise, it's just me by myself. Right. So there's no reference point. So people just see me by myself and they're like, Oh, like they don't really know how big you are or whatever. Right. Until you're like compared against other guys. So it's like, I almost need to put like, you know, 
like my, like Mo in the picture with me or something to compare an average person to what I look like. <laughs> no offense to Mo, but he's like a he's a smaller guy, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, he's a young kid. Yeah, like, I mean, he's a, how old is he? He's a kid. He's 19. 19. He's got some filling out to do. Yeah, yeah, he's gonna he's gonna fill out. He's gonna get huge. Yeah, he'll he'll be good. He'll be good. <laughs> Mo's probably gonna watch this. So don't want to say anything. No. Uh, uh, um, all good. I think, you know, between him, you're right. It's, it's a hard comparison that just, what do you think the outcome of that? Should, like, I think that's going to be the Hunter and uh, Valier show, like, or the Labrada Valier show. Like it's, they're going to be the what, Tampa. Yeah. Flip flop. Yeah. Well, as two. long as the border opens, <laughs> but uh, Ian yeah, said he's no, I think, get there honestly, no matter, like, I think, no matter what. It's, it's an interesting comparison, like, because we haven't really seen Hunter on the pro stage yet, so we don't really know, like, because I think, you know, part of it is, like, the guy does have a great, great look, and he looks crazy, but it's, like, you can't really, it's hard to say anything until you see the guy on stage, and it's the same for myself, like, I did one pro show and was in the mix, but it's, like, I haven't really got my feet wet yet, you know, I haven't done, a, I need to do a few more shows before people could be, like, you know, yeah, this guy's legit, or yeah, he's shit he'll never be anything you know what i mean like it's it takes a little bit for people to really see that and i feel like it was like what you're saying like the last time you know it's like i need that exposure and it's like i think it's the same thing for him it's like he needs to like prove himself and have that exposure but like he needs to go up against these guys like ian and like some of these other like top guys who you know obviously are going to give him a run for his money and put him in you know either he'll be in the mix with them or, you know, they'll beat him, whatever the case might be. It all depends. But uh, I think he just, yeah, he needs to get his feet wet. And I feel like once he does, then people will kind of be like, yeah, he's, you know, the next top guy or he's, you know, this and that, you know. He could be very well be like Patrick Moore. Like no offense to Patrick Moore, but, you know, if you look at Patrick Moore's pictures and his videos going into the Arnolds, I was like, that guy's top five material. And then, you know, same thing with uh, Olympia. I thought he'd do a lot better than he did, but when you saw him on stage, it just kind of wasn't. He was lacking the size, I think, of the the other guys. It's basically it. it looked like almost Patrick could do classic. Yeah, and that's another thing. It's like pictures by himself. The guy looks great, but yeah, then you put right. him in a lineup, and it's like it shows how he's a little bit smaller, and you know he's got a great shape and he's got the tight waist. But I feel like he needs a bit more overall size, especially to his legs. I think, and then. Once he once he has a little more size, I think he'll be, you know, pushing for a, a higher placing in uh, like an Olympia or Arnold's. But um, oh yeah, yeah, he'll definitely win win one of the bigger pro shows. I can see that happening, like one of the big shows. Yeah, well, that's what we should have talked about these first upcoming shows. Do you know, like, instead of talking about the Olympia, let's just finish this off. Do you know who else is competing in Tampa? Um. Oh, I I don't either. To be, I haven't heard of too many people. Like, because I feel like because of all that went on, like it's kind of iffy who's doing it. But I've heard a few people. You know, because I think Tampa's in about six, seven weeks. Hmm. It's not too far off. Like Tampa's like in I think mid August, so or early August actually. Yeah. It's like August seventh or something. So. Their yeah, economy is fully off. like they're fully booted up over there in Tampa. So, I, I from what I've heard, yeah, they have gyms open. I think, yeah, yeah, it's not like New York. New York, the New York Pro, it's like oh, actually, New York just booted back up too. Everything. So, their gyms. I saw Steve Weinberger talking about they're opening Bev's, and so maybe New York is starting back up too. Yeah, I feel like in the states they're a little less of a you know. They're not as much of pussies as Canadians are with opening stuff up. It started while well, they have they have uh, President Trump. Remember, we, we weren't going to talk politics here, so. Be I know, but um, you can just tell I'm a disgruntled Canadian right now. Wants his gym open, so. We're frustrated. It's coming. Yeah. I've got my little sweet spot now that I've been training at, which has like all the good machines. So. I know, but I just like I honestly I just miss the gym vibe, man. Like it's just not the same. Yeah, I know. I know. It's going gonna, it's gonna to happen again. It's, oh, it's going to be soon. Like, I, I'm, I'm keeping tabs on it, though. So, like, hopefully, you know, within the next week or two, gyms will be really open in here. So. Cross my fingers. I just yeah. had a release from Movadi that are saying, one of our commercial gyms here is saying they may be opening or they're preparing 
Probably July, I think. I think, yeah, commercial gyms will probably be like the first week of July or something. And then I think, well, private gyms might be a little sooner, like gym like New Body or whatever might be a little sooner. Um, but uh, it's just all based on how these phases go. But like from what I was told, even earlier today, it's like since they open stuff, um, like last week, cases have still been dropping, especially in like Ottawa and stuff. So like they're not getting worse really. So it's like, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't. Uh, Listen, if the protests aren't going to bring out more viruses or more spread, you know, it just, it's, it's a, to me, it, it just proves they can open it everything up, you know? Yeah. It proves that it, they can open everything. I just, it just, it baffles me how this hasn't, caused the second wave but anyways i'll leave that it's a picky virus man it's it's this whole thing has been so frustrating um i mean i yeah. want to take the right contingencies and i'm a very conservative not conservative but i'm i'm more of um you know I, from on the political spectrum I, I i look at things through like rather the government take control and tell us you know what's safe and what's not but after this all happened, I'm starting to be a little bit of a cynic. You know, like it looks like a lot of the scientists over projected. Um, and it's just maybe I'm just saying this in hindsight, but it's been a little frustrating. But I didn't want to talk no. about this because I don't want to get on that. But yeah, the gyms need to open, man. The gyms really need to open and we need to start for our mental health. I think like a lot of people have just suffered through even the golf courses weren't open. Well, exactly. Uh, and like I saw why was golfing open. Like that's yeah, the funny thing is like, well, the funny thing is, is like, I saw like, uh, one of my friends, uh, sent me an article earlier and it was about how like, there's a gym in Quebec city that opened and just said like, screw it. I'm opening my gym. And like the guy basically said, he's like, the government has pretty much forgot about the fitness industry and the gyms. Like they're basically, you know, opening everything but the gyms at this point. And it's like the people who are in the fitness industry are getting screwed. Like myself, you know, it's like, for me, like gaining business right now is very difficult when there's no gyms because no one wants to sign up for a coach. They don't have a gym to go to and they're working at home with bands or something, you know? So it's like not only the gym owners, but like everybody who's involved in the fitness industry is taking a hit because of this. And it's like, I know other industries were affected too. I'm not saying they weren't, but it's like the fitness industry and like the health and beauty industry in general is the only one that's been like totally been like, you know, yeah. We'll just let them stay closed another month. They're, that's okay. Like, it's frustrating because there's a lot of commercial, like small businesses, not just big commercial businesses, like not just big um, franchises, like Good Life and whatnot, but there are small gyms. And these people seriously suffered. Like Jay, Jay Nera, who owns Dynamo, um, I don't know if you follow him on Instagram, he was really frustrated when the protests started. And um, just the fact that, it was supported by the media and the government and you know, open his CrossFit gym. Yeah. Powerlifting gym, you know, there's ways to distance. I do accommodations for employers for workplace injuries for a career, right? Like that's my, that's my career. Like, uh, for, for a profession, uh, yeah. I help people figure out to accommodate their environments pretty much. A lot of this was preventable, man. You could have made accommodations to the gyms and it would have worked right away. I think the government could have taken a different approach with this. Even like if they believed that social distancing needed to be put in place, there were things we could have done. Like it frustrates me. They even closed down my gym and my apartment building. Like yeah. give me a key, I'll wipe it down when I'm done. Like what the fuck? Let well, like honestly, like I think in my opinion, I think Sweden had the best idea because yeah. like with them, it's like they kind of kept it where it's like, if you're sick, you should stay home. If you're not, then it's like everybody was, everything was still sort of open and whatever. And they didn't really get much more of any people getting infected than anywhere else. So yeah. Well, the like, who released some new and from someone from the who the world health organization apparently sent out a memo or I'm not quite sure, um, you know, what, what exactly, and I don't want to misquote, but they were saying that uh, people who are asymptomatic weren't really as contagious as they thought. Um, and then they tried to retract it. And I'm like, well, which one is it? They're just guessing almost, you know? Uh, I, I, it's frustrating, man, because uh, it's frustrating for everyone because of the anxiety caused people and all types of things. Yeah. Anyways, enough with that shit. So 
good season coming. You're back in the mix. Um, I think, I think, you know, slowly we're going to get back to somewhat normal. And that means at least from a bodybuilding perspective or from a professional bodybuilding perspective, you guys will have your, um, your season intact. And yeah. well, the good, the good thing is like you even said it, I think it, um, maybe you said it last time. I, I don't remember, but I, I remember he- when, but I remember hearing you say that you were, you were pleased to have like a sponsor after all this shit. Like it was like the light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. It's true. Like, honestly, like it was, uh, you know, through all that, all that's gone on in the past few months, like it was really cool to actually get an opportunity like that. And it'd be something that I've been looking like kind of holding off for, or like hoping for in a sense, you know, waiting to see an opportunity like that come about. And it's, uh, came about during this time, which was kind of like a, a bit of a motivating factor that makes me want to get back in the gym that much more because I want to be able to be, you know, going 110% every day and like be back fully into that routine that I'm used to. And it's like, it's so hard to like every single, like every day, man, I'll tell you every day, I'm like, just like, and the gym is open. Like, you know, it's like, I know I do have a decent amount of equipment and I'm thankful for it, but like, it's just not the same. Like, it's not the same. And like anybody who like, you know, I feel, I feel like it's funny because a lot of people will be like, Oh, you should be thankful that you have anything. And I'm like, or they could just open the gym because there's no reason it shouldn't be. Like you know, but they're, they're kind of like we we got to be thank like I'm thankful that I, I get it like I get it, but it's like come on like have you seen? <laughs> I'm just saying I'm thankful because have you seen some like I'm starting to see pictures of just some people and I wonder if they just completely gave up. I'm like wow, downsize downsize is not accurate. Like you you've lost everything and they're they're waiting to build back up. I guess when the gym's open, I don't know what they were doing. Yeah, they definitely weren't training. Um, but there's, I've seen a couple pictures of people who who have downsized, and that's, you know, I, 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 all you needed was some basic dumbbells and a bench. It's not really. No, you don't need a lot to like maintain. But yeah, like when it comes to the contest prep and really getting in the best shape for a show, like oh it, yeah, for you, it's, it's kind of hard without the gym. Like, but for you, you know, unless you have an amazing home gym setup. I'm talking, yeah, like the, the gym I'm training at is legitimately, like the, the studio I'm training at, the, the hammer, you know, the, the, the shoulder press from Movati, um, the good chest press, uh, a good leg press, like a plate loaded leg press, um, squat rack, uh, bench, uh, in, yeah. they're all from commercial gyms too, like these are commercial grade stuff. The, the pull down goes up to 280. Um, the uh, cross cables, everything's there, man. Like, it's the whole thing. Honestly, I would, I would give up a gym membership for this place any day now. It's just so convenient, like, having everything there. And all the dumbbells from, like, the beginning to 120. It would be nice to have 150s, but, you know, you do what you can. But, like, I don't know. I don't know. We'll, we'll, new body will be open soon, right? Hopefully. So, yeah, I'm going to find out this week probably when it's going to happen, but it should be very soon, yeah. Let's tell because you know everybody from New Body is watching this, so they're going to be like, New Body's opening. Joe's well, open. trust me, I get people messaging me every couple of days being like, oh, is New Body, do you know when New Body's opening? Do you know when New Body's opening? I'm like, I'm like guys, trust me, when I know, you'll know. But like, I got I this at the beginning of quarantine all the way from March to almost like, almost to date, like people would message me like, when are the gyms opening? It's like, who do I look like? Like the four one one, I know yeah. when the gyms are open. Well, if anybody knows, you'll probably know. I'm like, no, dude, I don't know when the gyms are opening. Yeah, I wish I had that kind of control. I'm not, I'm not I'm not Doug Ford, man. Like, ask. Oh. You know? I don't think that not no one in the fitness world likes Doug Ford right now. That's for sure. Or Trudeau. <laughs> I, I do like Doug Ford kind of, though, but he's well on this one. I'm not 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 a fan, but. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think, I think, yeah, I'd say, yeah, there's a lot of stuff he did well, but uh, delaying the gym opening is not my, not, not one I'll agree with, I guess. Yeah, yeah, it's been frustrating. I'm biased, too. Okay, man, you got to train, eh? You got to go. Yeah, I got to get, I probably should get, yeah, I should probably get ready and eat and stuff. (laughs) It's so funny. I'm I'm like, Joe, when can you do this? He's like, well, I got to train and I got to eat at this time, so. (laughs) Joe's schedule. He does treat I'll just, it. I'll send. I'll send Wayne a message. I'll be like, "Hey, bro, gonna be late. You know, had to had to do a video. So, 
<laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, right. I can even see you do that. I can see you being so upset. If you, Are you really going to be late, though? doesn't matter, man. Like, I get there. We usually start around 6, so I have enough time to eat and that. Like, I just – I'm just, as you say, like, you know, OCD – so you are OCD. Yeah. Very, I, very to the time of the day. I'm like, crap, it's four 30. I got to be eating. What am I doing? You know, I know. Like, and I just don't want to piss you off because I know you're OCD. <laughs> um, okay. Well, we'll let you go. Have fun training. Um, and uh, we'll do this again. Uh, like I said, we got to get more people in. And if you guys tune in next week, we'll have big Rami. So subscribe. Right. Okay. Subscribe to Joe. Straight. Subscribe to mine. Kind of a big deal videos. And Joe, what's your out? Do you have an outro? Coach Little Joe. Coach Little. <laughs> that's a fucking outro for you. Okay. Promo code for um, Iron Rebel for my free t-shirts. Because I need to build money for free t-shirts. Uh, 10. Joe, Joe with a legitimate sponsorship has a promo code as well. Yeah. Joe? Coach Joe, all capitals for 10% off any Dragon Pharma products online. Joe on Instagram. Uh, Joe. Joe on Facebook. Uh, you're not on Facebook, but Joe on... Um, uh, Me too. Not on Twitter either, are you? No, I'm on Facebook, but like I, no one uses Facebook that much, really. Joe, Joe, on, Joe on, what's that other platform? YouTube? YouTube, yeah. YouTube's Coach Little Joe as well. Okay, subscribe. All right. Subscribe. All right.